अनुसंधान और गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी एटले संधान Good morning friends today's our topic is the puli a metaphysical poem by george herbert this poem is specially for the students of core 112 that is sam 2 today we are going to discuss about different aspects qualities characteristics of metaphysical poetry and in reference with that we are going to analyze the poem the puli by george herbert very famous metaphysical poet let us start with the definition of metaphysical poetry what is metaphysical poetry that's the first question metaphysical poetry is highly intellectualized poetry marked by bold and ingenious conceits incongruous imagery complexity and subtlety of thought frequent of frequent use of paradox we can find in metaphysical poetry and often by deliberate harshness of rigidity of expression so this is the definition of metaphysical poetry friends we come to know about the basic qualities of metaphysical poetry the very important aspect of this metaphysical poetry is its ingenious conceit which is inventive conceits especially paradoxes now according to samuel johnson metaphysical poets the name given to group of british lyric poets of 17th century whose work was characterized by the inventive use of conceits and by speculation about topics such as love or religion friends the metaphysical poets who wrote metaphysical poetry a group of metaphysical poets they were men of learning the prominent metaphysical poets of 17th century were john donne henry vaughan andrew marvell john cleveland abraham cowley george herbert and richard croce these metaphysical poets wrote about struggles with faith in light of human reason the failing of unaided human reason was a significant theme in 17th century literature friends let us discuss about what is the differentiation between human reason and faith when we go to temple there is our faith in our heart there is no reason for that but human reason a very calculative counting of god's gifts is human reason but faith is the will of his and in milton's words to bear his mild yoke is faith in human heart now discuss about the main characteristics of metaphysical poetry metaphysical poetry is concerned with the whole experience of man what is this whole experience of man this is the first hand experience of an individual good or bad these metaphysical poets they express their emotions they analyze the emotions of an individual in their poetry metaphysical poetry was lyrical this is not like wordsworth spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings but this poetry was filled with thought and emotion 
metaphysical poetry was brief but intense meditations in this poetry we find striking use of wit irony and wordplay we find startling comparisons of contrast for example in this poem we are going to compare and contrast two words one is rest and the other is pulley which is a mechanical device one more thing of this metaphysical poetry is quality to a concrete object now one more characteristic of metaphysical poetry this poetry tends to analyze emotions rather than expressing these emotions so here an account of emotions is analyzed by the poet by the analyze because as we know that this poetry is an account of life of whole whole life span of an individual now let us discuss these characteristics in brief this poetry is intellectually rigorous intellectually powerful then scholastic what do we mean by scholastic is of high level it is dialectic dialectic means to search truth by discussions and argument this poetry is little bit subtle or mysterious also in this poetry we find argumentative quality which uses logic syllogism uh, syllogism and paradox in persuasion what is this syllogism or reasoning so this reasoning is humans questions for his situation for his condition to almighty this poetry is concentrated and complex and difficult thoughts are expressed in this particularly metaphysical poetry metaphysical poetry is dramatic with hasty aggressive opening but modulating tones its style is concise succinct and epigrammatic what do we mean by epigrammatic is a short poem with witty ending in metaphysical poetry we find use of conceits common place medieval topics with lots of comparisons to unusual unexpected things or images called conceits or extended metaphors what is this conceit friends let us understand what is the meaning of conceit conceit is a comparison between two different things or a person or object for example dun compares john dun a very famous metaphysical poet he compares the love he shares with his wife to a compass these are two different uh, two different things love and compass compass is material thing and love is uh, feeling but what what is dun's argument for this comparison he he says that he and his wife will remain together spiritually even though they are apart physically friends it reminds me the railway track you know, two tracks are going parallel together they never meet but they are together with each other so conceit is very important aspect of metaphysical poetry now let us briefly see or briefly go through the elements of metaphysical poetry these are body and soul which concerns corporal and spiritual time and eternity which defines finite and infinite real which is concrete and the ideal which is abstract carnal which is profane which is sensual and divine which is sacred so divine love and sensual love both are here sin and redemption are there emotion which is passion and reason logic reasoning of human being is there 
conceit and ingenious or fanciful comparison or metaphor which is used in metaphysical poetry now friends let us focus on our today's topic this is the background for metaphysical poetry so now discuss about george herbert as a metaphysical poet his qualities his practices and the ana analysis of pulley as metaphysical poetry george herbert born on 3rd april in uh, 1593 was a welsh born english poet orator and anglican priest he wrote religious poem as a priest he was very concerned about the religious aspects of contemporary society he was uh, he was very much aware about the religion and religion practices by the contemporary people in his metaphysical poetry he adapted a very simple style and the style was concrete also like john don george herbert was a pivotal figure in development of metaphysical poetry he was enormously popular because his poetry gave people a sort of thinking a sort of uh, ideas in their mind about religion and spirituality george herbert was deeply and broadly influential and arguably the most skillful and important british devotional lyricist friends now we are going to discuss about the characteristic of george herbert's poetry george herbert's religious poems are characterized by precision of language whatever he wanted to tell he had the right words for the poetry and to give the message a metrical versatility we find in his poetry which is one of the reasons why he, his poetry was famous an ingenious use of imagery or conceits we find in his metaphysical poetry which is the first requirement of metaphysical poetry uh these conceits and imagery which george herbert used in his poetry were very popular and favored by metaphysical school of poets uh according to helen wendler herbert's poetry was a cascade of form floats through the temple so we find a cascade of thoughts different thoughts uh, and and a, a a sort of flow of ideas flow of thinking flow of imagery in his poetry we find herbert's herbert's poems are religious and because of its popularity and because of its rhyming uh, some some of his poetries have been used as hymns also uh there are some qualities and one of them is directness of expression we find in george herbert's poetry directness of expression and some conceits which can appear quaint next please this comparisons or this conceits were quaint there was quite different for people in in our routine language we used to say the word hatke so this conceits were quite different but at the same time they were effective and expressive also next please herbert's poetry practices four major elements and these elements are the virtues his poetry was in a sort of didactic why didactic because as he he was a uh, a uh, 
uh, person who was very near to church and he wanted to spread the idea of virtues in the contemporary society. The second is worship which we find throughout his poetry which we are going to discuss in the reference with the Puli. The bird and sacraments are also very important elements in Herbert's poetry. What is this sacrament? That sacrament is baptism means accept acceptance of Christianity wholeheartedly. Now friends, uh, let us discuss about the Puli. What is this Puli? For village students, the students who are coming from village or small towns, they know this Puli very well. On, on well to fetch water from the well, we use this pulley to minimize our efforts to get water from the well. So the pulley is a mechanical device which lessens our burden, which lessens our labor for getting water from the well. So what is what is this pulley in reference with Herbert's poetry? Why he has given this title to the poem? Because this is mechanical thing and it has nothing to do with literature. So this is very important aspect uh, we are going to discuss about why it is appropriate title uh, the pulley. What is what is there in the poem? This poem pulley is an account of God's will and love for mankind. As we know that human being is the superior animal on this earth, we have all the powers to control other animals. So God is our father and he created us as the supreme power or the very near creature to God or to Almighty. So this poem is an account of God's will and love for us for human being. This relationship between God and his creation of man is reflected in fully. God is the father and uses this pulley to pull man back to him and keep him good. God has given us all the powers and beauty. So what is our duty? Our duty is to be, to remain with God and to follow his will or wish. Life of a man growing up, experiencing life and developing a pulley relationship with God. This is the basic theme or this is the central idea of Herbert's poetry. Let us start with the poem. First made man, almighty first made man, when he thought to give birth to the best creature on the earth, he made man. When God at first made man, these are the lines by Herbert in his poetry. When God at first made man, having a glass of blessings standing by, let us, said he, said Almighty, pour on him all we can. So he wanted to give everything what was in the treasure of him. Let the world's riches which disperse life contract into a span. It simply means that God has given us everything. What he has given? Let us go through the different things which he bestowed on us. He gave us beauty first. After which is beauty is there which, which is given to human being by Almighty. Then he gave wisdom to us. Then owner. Man is honored animal on this earth. So man has given owner. Then pleasure. We feel all the happiness surrounding us. So a sense of pleasure is there in us which is given by Almighty. So from his treasure God has given pleasure to us. Perceiving that alone of all his treasure there is rest. Rest was there in the bottom of his treasure. God gave us everything whatever he had 
and there was the last thing remaining in the treasure of Almighty and that was a rest. God thought for if I should he said if I should bestow this jewel also on my creature. He gave all the jewels of his treasure and the only rest was there. Now God thought for the first time that if I will give, if I will honor this thing also, the rest, what will happen? He said, he thought that he would adore my gifts instead of me. So the connection between Almighty and us will be broken. So he thought that I should not bestow this rest fully on this human being, the best creation by Almighty. So he thought he would adore my gifts instead of me and he will rest in nature. He will not appreciate the Almighty. So a feeling, a sense of feeling is there in Almighty. He wanted, he always wanted uh, the human being with us, with him, very near to him and that is why he didn't want to break this pull, break this bridge, break this contact of emotions uh, between himself and the his creation. Uh, so he thought that the man will rest in nature, not the, he will believe in nature and will not believe in God of nature. So both should losses be, both should be human being and almighty. So now what to do? All, all was give, all everything was given to human being and rest was there. But God was almighty was so kind he wanted to give rest also. But at the same time he thought that I don't want to keep my myself away from my this best creation. So what way he found? If the man worships the gifts instead of God, then both the man and God are failures. Both are failures because the man chooses to pursue something unholy and not worthy like God intended. So God wanted his creation to go on the right path, go on the right way and he never wanted to give any problem, any difficulties to his creation yet let him keep the rest but keep them with repining restlessness. God has given this last jewel also the last one he bestowed on us but he gave with the repining restlessness and see friends around the society around us you know, we find people roaming here and there, running for everything. Why we work? Why we learn? Why we work in our life to get rest, to get peace? And everywhere we find human being restless, doing something. So, God thought that let him be rich and weary, that at least. Why God wanted to be us weary, to be us restless to make us restless why he wanted his best creation to be restless because he always wanted to keep his best creation with her with him he thought very emotionally very skillfully he thought that if goodness lead him not yet to weariness Friends, let me divert a little bit. If your teachers preach you for study, you, you don't listen to them. Why? Because, okay, fine. But weariness of your exams, weariness of your results compel you to study for your examinations. So God is here in both role of father and a teacher. He thought that if goodness lead him not, if man in direct way, if he doesn't want to go to the Almighty, the peer in is, you know, you, you think about it. When, when you 
when you remember god or when you remember almighty during your very worst condition you always go to his laps you always tries to convince him about your problems so god thought in a in a proper manner or in in a very emotional thing emotional manner that if goodness does not let him weariness can show the way show the path to almighty here herbert explores the mysterious role which anxiety plays in the divine plan for human salvation all of us we need happiness all of us we need peace of mind and that is our salvation that is our final goal of life herbert explores this mysterious role of anxiety think about it friends whenever you feel anxiety in your heart in your mind you go directly to either your mother or to almighty so we we need solutions if we are helpless to find solutions ourselves we go to the uh, almighty to find the solution very nice very nice comparison is here anxiety is the back door to god's house it is the back door to god's house and love is the front door if we cannot search our benefit if we cannot search our good through the door front door which is of love the anxiety will draw us will drag us from the back door to meet the almighty so the role of love and anxiety is equivalent over here if we cannot understand the feelings of love anxiety will give us a way show us a path to reach up to almighty god has created a metaphorical pulley that there are two doors of almighty's house the front door is of love and the back door is of anxiety it depends on us with every religion that the religious persons who used to preach to us they have made us to be afraid of almighty they never helped us to love almighty so human being has never learned to love almighty why why herbert has put this idea of restlessness in human being this restlessness this repining restlessness will show the way to human being to go to almighty to find the solution of his way of being the final goal the final aim of human life is to get mental peace the happiness of life the pleasure of life and this is there in the laps of him so god thought that if man will not love he will come to me because of his weariness so herbert has put a line in his poetry that let him come to me to meet me and if he will suffer from weariness if my creation will suffer from repining restlessness he will come to toss he will come to me to meet he may toss him to my breast this simply means that almighty always wanted to get love to get feelings from him, human being it is it is very thought of him that if it happened that if he bestowed the last jewel of his treasure the rest on human being 
both human being and god will be separated because of this longing because of this starvation of feeling human being takes himself to his ideas to his love and get the final salvation the rest the mental peace in his lapse so to surrender almighty is the final solution to get the solution of our weariness god once again thought that if his goodness does not lead the man to worship him what do we mean by worship let me make you remind once again milton over here which is the best way to serve him which is the best way to worship him he says that to bear, bear his mild yoke means the given responsibilities to a human being if he bears everything without any complaint is the best worship or best way to serve him here herbert thinks about the best way to serve him the god thought that man will worship him because of love if not because of love because of weariness he will worship him and through this way the man the best creation of almighty will remain with him or with friends i told you in in a earlier state that we are going to discuss about the the object pulley god has created uh, a metaphorical pulley that reminds humans they are still connected but might need that extra pull to come back to worshiping their true creator why we worship almighty why we go to him why we need the element of spirituality element of religion in our life what's the reason which drags us or which pulls us toward almighty so here is a pulley an imaginary pulley with the help of pulley god drags us or god takes uh, us towards him and this is this is the moral or this is the theme of this poetry and this pulley is what this is devotional spiritualism we need to go to him we need to him to talk to him and we we always should be there with his ideas his wills his wishes so the important the importance of rest in our life is what the importance of rest by association of sleep which is an idea presented by renaissance writers so what is the association between rest and sleep many of shakespeare's plays include references to sleep or the lake of it as a punishment for sins committed friends remind remind it that uh, whenever we commit any sin or we commit any crime god doesn't allow to sleep so rest is given to us to walk on right path walk on right way friends pulley here is presented as a scientific device it is religious notion conveyed through secular scientific image herbert through this point poem finding serenity in the age of anxiety he explores the mysterious role of anxiety which plays in the divine plan for human salvation through this poem with the very last lines 
he wants to convey age if goodness and love did not lead people to god then anxiety would guide them unearningly back to their source so the almighty as our creator as well as our savior we find solution of mundane problems in the laps of him thank you friends Sandham All Gujarat Integrated Classroom सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी एटले संधान